So here is a sustained left bundle tachycardia. Please note, even though the paper speed is, is sort of uh, fast, this is a classic looking left bundle. So it would be a typical left bundle, and that's important to note. During tachycardia, we introduce a premature atrial complex from somewhere in the right atrium, and then we perturb the tachycardia a little bit, and I actually have all those numbers on the tracing. So if you look at the tracing, you have the A to A interval in the, in the uh, septum area, 300 milliseconds, and also 300 milliseconds when you put in your premature atrial complex. If you look at the next AA interval, it's 284 milliseconds. If you look at the ventricle, you can see that the cycle length is 300 milliseconds, but the PAC brings in the, the VV interval with the same QRS complex. So that's the setup, and those are the things you should have noticed. The mechanism of tachycardia is most likely, and these uh, are a bit long answers, but I, I want to make sure we get all the physiology in. So choice A is an antidromic tachycardia with anaerograde conduction over an atrioventricular accessory pathway. B is antidromic tachycardia with anterograde conduction over an atrial-fascicular pathway. Then third choice is atrioventricular node reentry with anterograde conduction over what we call a bystander accessory pathway. And the fourth choice is an atrial tachycardia with anterograde conduction over a bystander accessory pathway. So let's, let's eat through all three of those and let me show you the tricks you should have picked up with on this tracing. So, the first thing is, is this a pathway? Well, we don't see a hiss, and you could argue that I didn't have it in position or whatever you want to argue. You may be right, except a PAC, a PAC during tachycardia does bring in the next V with the identical activation. So even if I had a hiss in position, it doesn't matter. It's telling you that when the AV node is known to be refractory, and how do we know that? Because the AV node has just been activated without change in the, in the hiss bundle area. So if we put a PAC in at the same time or just after that local A is activated, we can't be going down the AV node with that complex. We must be going down something else. And it's not VT because otherwise the PAC wouldn't bring it in. So we know we're going over an accessory pathway. And the issue is which type. It's a classic looking left bundle. So in a classic typical left bundle, the ventricle is activated over the right bundle. Okay. So if you make one other measurement, very important to make. If you look at the beginning of the QRS, you'll see that the RV apical area is activated right at the beginning of the QRS. So now I want you to picture two types of scenarios. One, you have an AV pathway that enters the, let's say the right atrium to the base of the right ventricle. You would not expect the RV apex to be activated at the beginning of the QRS, would you? Because you're activating the base and it has to travel down to the apex. So that RV electrogram would be somewhere in the QRS. So this, none of this makes sense for an AV pathway. So we're going to cross that off right away. It could be anadromic, yes, but it's not using a classic AV pathway. Okay, so could it be using an atrial fascicular? Of course it could. So it meets all the criteria, right? You have a classic left bundle. Your V is started right at the, uh, at the point, the RV, right where the right bundle would come out. This is a classic looking atrial fascicular tract, okay? So yes, it's using that. Now, if you go back and say, well, how do we rule out these two, okay? We rule out the other two by the following. If you have an atrial tachycardia, remember the activation sequence is in the, is in the septum, right? During tachycardia. So therefore, if this is an atrial tachycardia, you put a PAC in and you you bring in the next day at a time where the, the septal A was already activated. How do you do that? You can't do that. You can't bring in the A when you, when you didn't even get to the A. So that rules out an atrial tachycardia. Well, then you might say, well, okay, so how do you know it's not AV node reentry with a bystander accessory pathway? That's a good choice, is it? No, not really, and I'll show you why. 
because AV node reentry is micro reentry. Okay, so what happens here is the following. Yes, the PAC brings in the V. So you could argue that there's AV node reentry going on. I'll give you that. You don't know that yet. But the PAC brings in the V, but that V is actually a late PVC, right? The PAC is late, and it brings in a, the V late. So all you're doing is bringing it in an interval of 280 milliseconds. So I would ask you this. If you had a classic AV node reentry, do you really think a PVC plates 20 milliseconds uh, during the circuit would ever capture the circuit? Guess what? It never captures the circuit. So this conclusively rules out AV node reentry with, with a bystander accessory pathway. So this is how it's shown in a schematic, and it's very important to know this maneuver. I'm showing you on a, for a left-sided accessory pathway, but it doesn't matter if it's left or right, atrial fascicular reentry, uh, a classic anadromic reciprocating tachycardia with a left or right pathway. The maneuver and the concept's the same, and that is the following. With anadromic tachycardia, you go over accessory pathway, you come back to the AV node. Okay, that's the circuit. You introduce a PAC somewhere near where the pathway is located. In this, I'm showing a left-sided pathway, but in the other case, it was a PAC on the right because it's a right-sided atrial fascicular tract. That PAC goes to the ventricle and brings in the V. Okay, that's the first part. That only shows you the QRS is due to accessory pathway conduction. It doesn't prove the circuit's there. So you have to follow that along and come back up. So you follow the circuit and it comes back up and it brings in the A. That completes the circuit of a macro reentrant tachycardia. So this is anadromic reciprocating tachycardia with conduction over an atrial fascicular pathway. We've successfully ruled out A. We've successfully ruled out C and D. And you know what? Bring out your ablation catheter, cure the patient, and go home.